when we think of Italian herbs, basil is one of the first that comes to our mind, right? But did you know some varieties of basil actually come from India? Sweet basil or the green basil, holy basil which we call as Tulsi are native to India and they thrive in the tropical climate. Other varieties like the Thai basil or lemon basil can actually also survive in our climate. If you fancy some basil for your pasta or for your tea, well, why don't we try growing it at home? So today I'm going to share with you how you can grow basil at home and how you can care for it. Spring, which is the current season, it's actually the best season to start basil at home. To start basil from seeds, I recommend using the tissue paper method. You can directly sow them in soil as well. But tissue paper method is a soilless method which helps the seeds to germinate better. So we have a tissue paper here and I'm going to just add the seeds and then we will moisten this up. We fold this and then we keep it in a sealed box or some kind of a plastic pouch. What this will do is basically conserve the moisture. When the seeds have germinated, you can transfer them in soil and then you have to keep them outdoors, which brings me to a very important factor, which is sun. It is a tropical plant, right? So it requires good amount of sun. Here, I'm going to just put it in the soil and keep it in a place that gets about four to five hours of direct sun. That is really, really important. Basil cannot tolerate winter so much. When the temperature drops under 20 degrees Celsius, basil leaves will turn, they will start turning black. Eventually, the plant may also die. But don't worry, before basil dies, you can collect the seeds from the plant once it has started flowering. So here you would see this purple basil is flowering. And then you, sa you save those seeds and use them in the next season of spring. When it comes to soil and fertilizer, basil requires well-draining soil, which should be rich in nutrients. So here I have purple basil and here I have Thai basil. For all kinds of basil, the moisture availability should be good. The compost you can add once every season. Now when it comes to watering the basil, what I do is that I make sure that the top soil does not get dry. Pruning is a very important part of growing basil. Basil starts to bloom when it is about 10 to 15 centimeter tall. So here, this size is when you would see the flowers have started to come out. We want our plant to avoid flowering because we are not interested in flowers, we are actually interested in the leaves, right? In basil, flowering will not allow the plant to become thicker or bushy. And one such example is here. This is a Thai basil next to me and you would see it is very heavily flowering. What happens at this stage is that the stem will become barky, it will become woody and the plant will stop growing too much in the leaves. It will start to just grow flowers because now it wants to send out seeds to make more babies out of it. So at this stage it is really important, this is a purple basil here, that you start pruning your plant which means that just cut off the top leaves. Now you can use this in your food or you can just distribute it with your friends as well. The number one problem that I have faced with basil is the problem of aphids. These are tiny white insects or sometimes green insects that cover the entire basil plant. They get stuck on the sap of your plant. They want to suck out the nutrition from the plant. Leaf eating beetle or slug may also trouble your basil. You can use simple soap solution or neem oil spray that I usually show. You can refer to those videos how to go about it. But having a neem oil spray handy is always good whenever you have a bunch of plants at home. Very rarely I've seen powdery mildew or fungal problems as well. In that case, we use a milk spray. I have also done a video on that. But generally to avoid any kind of problem with your basil, the good air circulation is really important and sunlight. If these two things are taken care of, most likely you will minimize any kind of fungal infections or insect or pest attack on your plant. I briefly talked about harvesting when I was talking about pruning. It's essentially the same thing, but here the agenda is that we want the leaves for consumption, right? So to avoid your plant to grow tall, we want to pluck some leaves and we want to do that frequently. This will help to make your plant healthy and strong. And of course, the basil quality that you get is also the best. So what we essentially do is we just cut out along with the stem, top leaves, always the top leaves. And since your plant is quite bushy, you can do that 
with whatever 10-15 stems that are coming out and this sweetness and this flavor can be maintained when you freeze them or you just keep it in your freezer. What I like to do is that I use tissue paper and then I cover the leaves in this tissue paper. Keep this in a plastic box. This will maintain the freshness of the basil leaves for much longer when you're keeping them in the freezer or in the fridge. Actually, freezer might be intense if you stay in a space that gets really, really cold. Then you might have to freeze your basil because you will not have basil around the year. So in Mumbai, for example, I get basil around the year, so I don't have to freeze it for the days when I don't have basil growing, right? So in that case, I just need to retain them for a few days so I cover them in tissue paper, keep in a box and then just keep in the regular fridge. I hope this video helps. We have done similar basic videos on gardening. Take care. Thank you so much for watching.